Hello everyone, my name is Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we have Dauntless 1.11.0, which includes new Radiant Escalation Legendary Amps, some new returning cosmetic hunt passes, and the long-awaited Lightbound Boreas. Let's dive into what this patch has to offer. Consider dropping a like for me and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. Before we jump into it, this video is brought to you by me, with the Mr. Trails dot store. We now have the Scorching Hellion counterpart to the Frozen Pangar design available on all of the same products, meaning that you'll be able to get yourself a matching pair of mugs, tote bags, desk mats, coasters, and more. Perfect for that pair of friends or those two sibling families. And for the next two weeks, you can use code CRY10 to save 10% on the Scorching Hellion and Frozen Pangar designs of the Chrysa collection. Let's go ahead and start off with the new Behemoth Edition Lightbound Boreas. The new Radiant variant of Boreas can be found on Conundrum Rocks in the Hunting Grounds as well as any Escalation aside from Umbral. It will be replacing the Flameborn Nasher spawn chance on the Conundrum Rocks, so it will not be guaranteed. Its base move set is going to be very similar to regular Boreas, the Ram Charge, Tail Swipe, Spinning Slam, Stomp, and Gore Attacks all being the same. There's one additional basic move, dubbed the Quantum Spinning Slam. Similar to Lightbound Koshai, Boreas will rewind back into its original position after a Spinning Slam. It's not until the Aether Charged or Enraged states where things actually get interesting. When Lightbound Boreas Aether Charges, which is much faster for the Boreas family than other behemoths, it will generate a sh Radiant Shield and start absorbing energy, and this process will summon along some Radiant Spitter minions. If you can break through the shield in time, this is a damage threshold interrupt attack, but if you fail to deal the required damage, it will jump up and release a massive shockwave across the arena, similar to the Chronovore. This is the main addition to the Aether Charge state, with the Quantum Spinning Slam seeming to become more often as well as it releasing a wave that will trap the Slayers in a Radiant Prison if they come in contact with it. But it also gains more attacks when enraged. It has a teleport where it will jump up and travel to a new location, the Rage Stomp, which will repeatedly stomp the ground while summoning bombers, which the bomber minions will behave similarly to regular bombers, and when exploding them on Radiant Boreas, it will cause it to stagger for a second. And the Head Slam move, where it will jump in the air and headbutt the ground where a player is standing. The Head Slam will have a combo move with Radiant Prisons, causing them to explode if they are in the surrounding area. It's about as you would expect an Elemental Variant Behemoth to be, very similar with some Elemental Twists. It should have a tad bit more HP than a regular Boreas, but it will likely be just as fast of a fight or faster if a regular Boreas would have gotten an Ice Shield in that time. Next up, here's what I've been dying to talk to you guys about from this patch, as I alluded to a few days ago. As some of us may have expected, we have two new Legendary Lantern and in Radiant Escalation with this patch, almost giving us that full set now. The first one is the Pangar Legendary Amp, where the Pangar effect will now travel around with the player as a secondary effect, while under its effects, the player won't spend or recover stamina, meaning it will be great for keeping adrenaline active near its maximum effectiveness. But it does cause some issues stemming from the stamina system itself. See, in the normal stamina system, when you hit zero stamina, you can no longer dodge, and you lose the ability to sprint until you hit 20 stamina. And this will unfortunately still be the case when you have this effect active. If you're at zero, you won't be able to dodge, even though it technically won't cost you any stamina. And if you activate the effect after hitting zero, but before you regen to 20 stamina, then you won't be able to sprint until you reach 20 stamina again, leaving you more than 10 seconds where you're not able to sprint. We've reported these issues and hopefully they'll be fixed relatively soon. But the second amp here, the Skarn Lantern Amp, was was my suggestion, and oh boy, is it entertaining, and it's another amp that will help you one-shot Behemoths. Upon using the Skarn Lantern, your maximum HP will be set to 1, and in return you receive shields equal to double the HP value that you had upon activation. This means at 800 HP you gain 1600 shields, at 1100 HP you gain 2200 shields, and this will benefit from adding tough into your build, with 1600 HP adding 3200 shields. And that's it. That's all the amp does. But why is that so fun? Well, of course, this massive amount of shields is going to have crazy synergy with Galvanized and Bastion. 3200 shields is a whopping 64% crit chance coming from Galvanized, and will raise the damage on Bastion enough to decimate and even one-shot Behemoths. There are just so many shield memes you can do with this thing. Even Aegis works incredibly well with this thing, not only giving you more shields, but the invincibility effect will proc on every lantern hold. I feel like 
like a mad scientist with having conceptualized this thing. The amp does functionally change how the Skarn Lantern works though, because when the damage stones deactivate, that's when the, all the shields go away, meaning they won't last for 25 seconds. And if you get the amp when using the Skarn Lantern, it won't have the usual Skarn Lantern shield generation on top of the amp effect. But obviously, the amp effect is just way better at making shields anyway, so it's not that big of an issue. And obviously, there are some bugs with this, but in the in the very broken way. Because you see, there are a few shield sources that can refresh the duration on this and cause you to be able to stack it on top of itself so you can just kind of gain infinite shields. It's namely Bastion, so in a two behemoth fight you can kind of like smack the first behemoth to death with 100% crit chance and then the second behemoth gets one shot by a Bastion slam no matter how much HP it has. But uh, hey, it's fun and entertaining and even after they fix that bug, you should still be able to one shot certain behemoths with it given the proper setup. However, I might as well mention now that the Broadside Barrage amp is getting nerfed a bit in this patch, going down from 10 cannonballs to 7, meaning it's far less likely to be able to one-shot something, but that should still be good for about 75% HP or so for certain behemoths. And now it's time for us to talk Hunt Passes, the Reward Cache, and other cosmetics. As always, if you are planning to make any premium purchases on Epic Games, whether it be Dauntless, Fortnite, or just buying a game, consider using my supporter creator code the Mr. Trails at checkout. Just make sure the A is before the I, as it is trails and not trials. 1.11.0 brings along a new Slayer Commission Pass for purchase, with the same 100 level system, and upon completing it, you'll be earning the reward cash currency relic coins. Purchasing the commission pass will give you full platinum back, and potentially a bit extra depending on your region. The relic coins will allow you to purchase the items in the reward cache, which will be featuring the cosmetics from the Haunted Shadows Hunt Pass originally debuting in October 2019. I don't know why they didn't save this one until we are a little closer to Halloween, but you get to prepare earlier this year. As for the cosmetic hunt passes, we have the Dungeon Delvers and the Blazehawk Down Hunt Passes. The Blazehawk Down Pass will of course have the Blazehawk armor from the Searing Talons Hunt Pass, originally debuting in March of 2020. And the Dungeon Delvers Hunt Pass will feature the Wayfinder gear from the Clear Skies Hunt Pass, originally debuting in July of 2020. These cosmetic passes will only contain those armor sets and not the secondary armor sets that were from those original hunt passes. Both of these passes will contain the weapons of their set though, as well as the emotes from the original hunt passes. And you could potentially win yourself one of these hunt passes in the Discord server in the description. There's a giveaway over there right now for Dauntless Hunt Passes, some Monster Hunter cosmetics, and some grand prize winners winning some Monster Hunter games. There's also a new Platinum Purchase Pack for the Morning Tide Mall. This will give you a hammer skin as well as a 1650 Platinum Recharge. And there will be a new reforging related quest line coming from the Scarred Master, where you'll be able to unlock a unique armor transmog. To unlock the quest line, you'll need to have the final node of the Slayer's Path unlocked and have all Shroud and Resikiri armor pieces. The quest line will give you the Patience, Determination, Tranquility, and Discipline transmogs in that order. And this is like a full-on hipster armor set. I feel like you're all going to be obligated to put these transmogs on when you are doing parkour in Ramsgate. In a couple bits of other news, the Chronovore has had some adjustments to the Radiant Prisons, and they're going to explode when the Radiant Burst attack happens now. And they now plan on the weekly story quest to also give weapon experience. Currently, it looks like it's only going to be 100 experience, and there's already been feedback about that not being nearly enough for a once a week thing, so we'll have to see if they increase the payout on that. You do, after all, get four bounty tokens per day, which is at minimum a thousand experience, but those are the main things to look out for in the 1.11.0 patch of Dauntless. Once again guys, drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already as it helps me out way more than you even know. And I have been Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, and I will catch you guys next time.